go. Okay. So for my project, I worked similar to what Grant worked on, analyzing the hypothetical T quark, which is a theorized fourth generational quark. So a quick background. Grant went over this, so I'll give it a slightly shorter explanation. We currently, what is accepted in particle physics is the standard model that encompasses all the fundamental particles we currently have in three generations of quarks. However, there are certain gaps that the standard model doesn't explain. It doesn't provide an adequate explanation for gravity. So what the top, the T quark does, which was used to be known as the T prime quark, is offer an explanation for gravity, why, why it's so weak, and also explain the unusually low Higgs mass. So uh, t we analyze generated data, because you can't just go to the CMS and just run experiments. Sandy kind of explained what the CMS was. The CMS, however, produces tons and tons of data. So we need to know what we're looking for before we run an experiment and get all of that data so we know what events are interesting. So we use MadGraph to generate Monte Carlo files that are basically what it would look, data of what it would look like if a T-quark were to exist. Monte Carlo files also include other information that makes it easier for us to identify what events are interesting. It includes what particles are what, and we can also look at every stage of the particle tape decay. For instance, you can see top quarks and the T quark, which would decay too fast to see in the detector. And that lets us know what we need to look for when we actually look at the experiment, the CMS experiment. So to analyze this data files, we use the software package root, which while very useful, can be quite obtuse to learn. The best explanation I have for it, I've heard for it, is you can do anything with one line of code, but it takes you months to find that one line of code. <laughs> Uh, luckily, I got it working. We, I used it for mainly two things. One is visual displays of data, for instance, like 2D and 1D histograms that let us know, gives us basically an idea of where the interesting information is. For instance, in this, you can see the interesting information would be between these uh, 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 momentum and that measure of the angle. I also used it to, instead of just giving visual data, actual comparing two files together. And I'll get to that in just a second. So what we were actually looking for in these particles is various qualities that the particles have. You have your old friend from physics, theta, which measures the angle with relation to the beam pipe. Eta, which is similar to theta, except straight up is zero, and zero and negative pi are infinity and negative infinity. We have phi, which is basically perpen running perpendicular to the beam pipe. You have the transverse momentum, which is the sum which is the square root of the sum of the squares and the momentum in all the directions, basically the overall momentum of the particle. And then the HT, which is the sum of the transverse momentum of all the final state quarks. And what we used the, um, and then what was interesting in my file, and kind of different from Grant's, at least this part was, was the presence of the Z boson in my file. I analyzed the decay of the T quark into a Z boson and a top quark, which is slightly less which is slightly less likely than Grant's T uh, top quark and Higgs boson. And also the Z boson in some of my files had decay into leptons, like electrons and such, when Higgs is always only hydronic. Also, one interesting problem I had to solve was being able to graph and get information for what's called the forward jet, which are light quarks, up quarks, down quarks, those the first and second generation of quarks that were generated external to T quark decay. And Jack's, uh, Jack actually showed me how to do this because the Monte Carlo file treats these quarks as if they're parents or other light quarks, which will never actually happen to reality. You don't have an up quark decaying into an up quark in reality. It treats it as if that is the case, so you can, so you can tell what the forward jet is. So what we're actually using this data to look for are what are called cuts or limits on the data that would indicate particles that are probably coming from a T quark decay. For instance, this is showing, well, let's look at top quarks that are between 200 and 500 GeV, or a, a measure of transverse momentum. And to determine which cuts are the best, you use this formula, which gets you what's called a figure of merit. The figure of merit is calculated by taking the amount of particles within the cuts from the signal file over the square root of the amount of particles you get from the background file within the cuts times the scaling factor. Scaling factor comes from the probability of decay and how many particles we have in each file. And Dr. Baring and I determined that for my files, the scaling factor was 802. But in order to make it easier to compare, I decided to try and make a macro. Because originally I was trying to do it kind of uh, 
visually comparing the data to try and see where it looked the best cut, but that was both that both took a long time and wasn't very consistent. So I tried to make a more quantifiable, more consistent, and most importantly, easier way to analyze the file. So I tried to make a so I made a macro that takes the background file and the signal file, and you also input the range of cuts. For instance, I want to see from 250 to 500 GeV, which cut would give me the highest figure of merit, and that gave me and that. Uh, trying to be very useful. Of course, there's a few problems with the macro. For instance, root, it's kind of weird how it reads through files in uh, when you write your own code, because you have to define the object that reads through the file every loop instead of before the loop. So it took me a few hours to figure that out. And then a few interesting problems I had when I was working through these cuts was the lack of Z bosons in the background file. I initially, uh, we initially thought we could do it by creating uh, by taking two of the top quarks and if they were both above the optimum threshold we were trying to find and one of them was above the threshold we had already determined for top quarks the one between the thresholds was the Z boson and the one above the top threshold was the top quark but then we got in an issue if you make the optimum threshold equal to that top threshold you get zero hits from the background file and get infinity and you create a exponential graph of the figure of merit. So we couldn't really create meaningful cuts, at least up now, for Z bosons. And then for the forward jet, since there's no real forward jet in the background file because there's no T quark, we, I found this problem. We have a logarithmic curve for the figure of merit. And at a point, you hit basically a ceiling where you, uh, as you keep increasing the range, you get increasingly diminishing returns on your figure of merit. You go from 0.7 to 0.701. So how I solved that issue was I had the program stop looking for new files once it hit that logarithmic ceiling, which I found, what I, what I found which was weird was it was around 0.7 for all the files, Some of, and I'll show you that right now. These are the actual numbers I got, so if you notice, like all these figure merits are quite, uh, are quite similar. And then going forward, I think when I, what we're trying to work on is a, trying to find a way to make meaningful cuts for those Z bosons, because currently they aren't really useful because they're just trying to get as close to that top threshold as possible. And if you notice, these figures of merits are very low. They're about two, they're almost two orders of magnitude below some of these other figures of merit. And this also includes the efficiency ratio, which is the amount of particles that, are, that remain from the single file after the cuts. I'll leave this slide up, but does anyone have any questions? Uh, Dr. Bean? So, how many, you had 100,000 TT bar? Uh, 10,000 TT bar okay. uh, for the signal file. The background file. Oh, uh, that was 10,000 too. So how many events ended up passing all the cuts? Uh, for the background or signal, this would for be... For the background, for one of them. Um, oh, I didn't get the efficiency ratio for the background, but this would be the signal. So, um, for instance, uh, like 37% of 10,000, which is like 3,700. Okay, but for the background, what we were finding is you didn't have enough background events. So by the time you scale it by 802, you're going to get the same answer over and over again. Uh, the same answer for right. the added. Because how many events were left after your cuts in the background? Um, I, I didn't actually get that number. Okay, but if it's a small number, if it's changing from like 8 to nine, mm -hmm. then that's why you're getting this logarithmic. Oh, for this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you're scaling it by eight, 800. Yeah. And do you have a question? No. No, that kind of covered. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you.